How does the cell manage to organize its DNA within the tiny nucleus? In a recent study, we showed that when the 2 meter long DNA is packaged in the microscopic nucleus, the cell avoids entanglements and knots by transiently cutting and re-ligating the DNA. Aris Lieberman Aiden and Leonid Murney previously conducted independent studies proposing that ring-shaped protein complexes called cohesins are constantly landing on DNA, which allows pairs of DNA strands to slide through the ring, forming a loop domain. Organizing the DNA in loops can facilitate interactions between gene promoters and their regulatory elements, called enhancers. It can also prevent interactions between genes in one loop domain and enhancers in another. Loops are formed via the interaction of two DNA sites bound by the CTCF protein and the cohesin complex. This is analogous to an efficient switchboard operator who puts people at a distance in contact with each other by making the right connections and avoiding wrong numbers. Once the DNA is fed through the loop, it is free from entanglements. There is a problem, however. Already entangled or loosely knotted DNA segments outside of the loops might be converted to tighter knots as chromatin is fed through the extrusion complex and loops are enlarged. This would be analogous to what might happen if you were trying to untangle your headphone wires by simply pulling on one of the loops. The only solution to resolve DNA knots is to cut the DNA and quickly ligate it back together. This is exactly what's done by the enzyme topoisomerase 2, or TOP2. To resolve entanglements, TOP2 binds to one of the strands involved in the entanglement, temporarily cuts it, but holds the ends. Meanwhile, TOP2 passes a neighboring strand through the break, and after it passes, TOP2 seals the break and leaves the DNA. Since TOP2 is continually cutting and pasting together DNA, we first trap TOP2 on DNA by treating cells with the widely used anti-cancer agent, etoposide, which prevents the final DNA ligation step, effectively freezing TOP2 in its double-strand cleavage form. To study the relation between loop extrusion and TOP2 activity, we mapped endogenous TOP2 DNA cleavage sites by a method we developed called nSeq, which provides a snapshot of DNA ends genome-wide. Using this technique, we discovered that TOP2 frequently cuts the DNA of 45 nucleotides just outside of the loop anchors bounded by CTCF and cohesin. We therefore propose that during loop extrusion, TOP2 is needed to periodically clear up the intertwined DNA that builds up just outside of the loops. In this way, transient DNA breaks may help keep massive genomes organized without entanglements. This is not without risk. DNA breaks are the most dangerous form of DNA damage because the discontinuity in both strands provides a chance for the creation of chromosomal translocations, deletions, or insertions. Indeed, we observed that DNA breaks at loop anchors were enriched for previously identified breakpoint clusters that are commonly translocated in cancer. This would be as if a switchboard operator made a drastic mistake by crossing the wires resulting in a wrong connection. Therefore, in trying to solve the immensely difficult problem of chromosome folding within the confines of the nucleus, TOP2 could potentially create a worse problem.